Well, hello there. So great to see you. How are you doing? I hope you are well. I'm Jenny Kirk and it's great to see you back here at Weir Yard. And today, following on from last Friday's bargain crawl video, I put my money where my mouth was and I purchased a locomotive that I spotted actually after I filmed that that came on offer at TMC, the model centre. This is the LMS compound and that is a significant difference over the Midland compound which I already had in my collection but at the time of ordering I didn't actually realise just how different these models were. Now at sub £100 TMC brought these out at an amazing discount. Now they're new old stock and they've got the early crest and the late crest versions of these both at the same price and uh, I just thought it was a deal that I couldn't miss and it gives me a great opportunity to show you just what you get with the Batman LMS compound. Now we do have a link down in the description box. At the time that I bought this model they had more than 10 available of both different livery options. Now there's a lot of great deals out there at the moment and one of the things that does keep coming up time after time is just how expensive this hobby is. The whole purpose of today's video is to show that you don't have to break the bank to get some really great models and certainly at sub £100 we haven't seen these sort of prices on new tender locomotives for quite some time. So it's a great opportunity to purchase one of these if you don't already have one. So come with me and let's take a good close look at this bargain under £100 brand new LMS compound locomotive. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from... This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo new bargains keep coming through all the time and when they're keenly priced they do tend to sell quite quickly so i actually bought one of these mystery shopper style and it came today so we've put it under the microscope to take a good close look at what you get with the backman lms compound in br livery for under 100 pounds brand new now before we get into the video i'd just like to ask a huge favor do please hit that like button and consider sharing the video to social media and let your fellow modelers know about these great deals. So if you want to be in the best place and not miss out, do hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. You can also, don't forget, pick up all of the merch from the merch store down below. And we've also got the exclusive Monday Club Wagon, only available for this channel. You can pick that up through the link down below. It's made for us by Rapido. But do hurry, because stocks are really limited. They've proved to be really popular. But let's get on to seeing just how good the LMS compound model from Backman is for under £100. <laughs> Over the years, the National Railway Museum has produced a number of different limited edition versions of their full-sized locomotive collection in miniature for enthusiasts to buy at the shops at the museums. And this has included D8000 in this lovely gloss green. We've got uh, Deltic DP1 in this French blue, Butler Henderson in the Great Central Railway green, and also the Robinson 8K in the darker uh, Great Central Railway freight colours which is this dark black uh, with a very slight hint of green in there at least it does look to my eyes and these have all sold really really well but this particular one when it came out did seem to be suffering almost from a uh, limited edition fatigue at the time uh, it felt like it stuck around a little bit and it was a while before I purchased one 
but actually I'm really, really glad that I did. The Midland Compound number 1000 really is a beautiful model and it does run incredibly well. Backman had had a little bit of experience by this point with the 440 wheel arrangement and it might have remained just that in my collection and that was until TMC, the model centre, uh, announced that they had a number of these and the early Crest version as well in their sale and the price point really was too good to be ignored. Um, they were selling them at under the £100 mark. So actually I, I couldn't resist and I decided I'd purchase one um, because I doubt we're going to see prices like that again. And we do have a link in the description box if they are still available to take you to TMC the Model Centre. On the end of the box we've got catalogue number 31-933A and this is the LMS compound for 1143 in the BR lined black with late crest and you can see it's got a 21 pin DCC socket and I will be showing you how to DCC fit these models uh, towards the latter third of this video. And we've got a very brief history of the LMS 4P compound and it says it was based on the original and successful Midland compound designed by SW Johnson and these were LMS built uh, superheated versions uh, they built 195 of these from 1923 to th 1932 and uh, they actually survived reasonably well through to 1961 and also just a little bit of information there that it's based on the left hand drive version. We do have some extra parts and most of these are to do with a combination of speaker enclosure if you're wanting to put your own sound into these and then we've also got a number of different parts which are for the cylinders. If you have very generous curves, then you can put these inserts in, which uh, take away the little cutout that Backman have been forced to put in to enable these to get round uh, more train set like curves. It's actually quite subtle, the differences between this locomotive and the Midland compound that I have that was produced for the National Railway Museum. First of all, I suppose the most obvious when you look at this is that the tender is a completely different body on these. And I wished I'd have known about this actually a lot earlier because then I probably would have had a Midland compound in my collection. But it's probably no bad thing because I've been able to get it at such an incredible price that really that allays any missed play value. There's also a number of other differences between the two. I want to show you just at the front there, you can see that we've got some quite small gussets on the frames just in front of the smoke box. But when we look to the LMS compound, these are much more substantial. You can see they stick out further and uh, actually go all the way to the front of the buffer beam. We've also got this uh, what looks to be a water feed on the side of the boiler which the Midland compound does not have and uh, there's also some differences on the side of the smoke box as well. So you could almost argue this is completely different tooled model. There's a lot of differences. Looking to the top of the model as well we've also got different safety valves. Very very distinctive between the two. Different arrangement on the whistle and it looks to be that we've also got a slightly different profile of funnel as well and um, the tender as well is very very obvious when you put them side by side like this you can see we've got uh, the dome and the filler on the LMS compound whereas we've just got the filler on the Midland compound in a much larger coal space and the detail on the front of the tender too is markedly different between these models. Now I'm going to move the Midland compound out of the way and focus now on this model because this is the one that is in the sale and it really is quite a sleek design. We've got these big driving wheels which are replicated perfectly by Backman on this model and they really do give a kind of grace to this and when it's running as well even at relatively high speeds it does look like it's got a very sedate pace because of the big wheels with the spokes going round. It doesn't really quite seem as fast as it really is going. And that, I suppose, is a hallmark of some of these earlier locomotive designs 
whereby they minimize the uh, reciprocating uh, fatigue that could be induced into the rods and motion by actually having really big wheels it also acted as a form of gearing to give them quite a reasonable top speed. Looking to the underside we've got the fairly typical uh, drawbar connector on these and again you can see there it's possible for the uh, connector uh, to slip off the pin and then that puts a lot of stress on the wiring and it's something that I think that um, it would be better if Backman used a screwed in method where you'd have a screw at either end of that so that you can still easily separate them but it doesn't run the risk of putting stresses and believe me it's quite easy to accidentally put these on the track and somehow manage to get them uncoupled and find yourself actually pulling the train by the wires which is not really recommended at all. Keeping on the underside you can see that the factory brake rigging is all applied out the box. We've also got the water scoop and you can also see that we've got the uh, tender pickups as well which appears to be using uh, wipers but onto the faces of the axle rather than the wheels which should mean that they keep free of any dirt. They only play on the outer axles of the tender, but that should be more than enough to give this a really, really good electrical pickup, as we've also got wipers on the backs of all four of the driving wheels, although there's no pickups on the front bogey. We've also got a slimline tension lock coupling, which is fitted inboard just there of the rearmost axle so you can easily change this for couplings of your choice. Buffers on the rear there are fully sprung and I do love this tender actually it's quite smooth sided um, but the paint finish with this satin black really is superb. The lining is crisp and clean and on this particular model we've got the BR late crest really quite nicely printed on there there's so much detail and again close magnification really does reward looking to the tender chassis it's got the outside frames and in a way it's a shame that this is just plain black because when we look at the midland compound there's so much lining on there that brings out some of that detail but the detail is still there and you can see against the light all of the spring detail axle boxes and riveting and these sort of upside down kidney shapes as well for the cutouts in the frame that would have been part of weight reduction. The front of the tender as well, this is another area that the model departs substantially from the Midland compound and you can see that we've got a lot of detail with the lockers and the dual brake standards. These would be for the handbrake on the tender. From above there's plenty of rivet detail and then behind that we've got the coal load insert. The actual moulding of the coal is uh, a uh, plastic part. And then we've got these two slightly strange holes which I think are for additional parts um, but they do stick out a little bit like a sore thumb uh, out of the box as you can see but it's probably no difficult thing just to add a dusting of real coal over the top, crush it up glue it on you don't need a lot and it certainly will improve that on the back deck we've got the dome with its uh, regimental line of rivets around the bottom plus those flanges in front it's a lot of detail on here quite subtle and then we've got the filler cap and uh, a couple of extra gussets here on the back just as per the prototype on the back we've got the LMS build plate and you can see there as well really nicely printed on really really sharp and the detail on that is incredible I can't actually see even this close and this big on the screen of the camera just what they say but certainly I've got every faith that under close magnification they are going to look crisp handrails are all metal again applied at the factory and we're going to just move along now to the locomotive itself now one area where a compromise has had to be made because 00 is narrower than uh, what these should be if they were exactly true to prototype is we've got a little bit of a crank in the connecting rods and this is just a little bit visible you can just see it there the way it cranks in so the cylinders are in the right place so are the uh, cross slides uh, but because the wheels are slightly inboard there has to have been a mechanism to get that back there 
and that is a shame but obviously a necessary compromise there's no real other way of doing it we've got these central brake blocks and mechanism in there all factory applied and I do like that we've got all of the brake rigging factory applied as well on a locomotive such as this they are most necessary and uh, very very obvious as they run outside of the wheels and it really does add substantially to the authentic look of this model. The cross slide itself is of all metal construction which means that it is incredibly durable and certainly it's uh, a joy to watch when this model is running. It's quite a simple set of uh, gear on the side. We've just got the cross slide and connecting rod all of the valve gear on these locomotives would have been inboard and hidden out of the way looking underneath the boiler there is a slight representation of some of this but it is just molded detail and in this uh, satin black with the black boiler above it it is actually quite tricky to see any of that but it is there we've also got this additional equipment on the running plate and the pipe work up the side of the boiler the lining is crisp and clean look at that that really is quite nice it's simple but a lot of the BR liveries were quite simple coming out of the Second World War we still had wartime austerity going on and the black just meant that these were really a lot easier to keep clean because effectively the dirt didn't show quite so badly but I do love that black the red and this sort of off-white cream, uh, almost grey colour that we've got in the lining bands. And you can see there it follows the slightly more complex shape of the splashes. In the middle we've got uh, the works plate and that really is again another crisp printed detail. There's no smudging, it's exactly where it needs to be. And again I've got every faith that on magnification that's going to be quite legible. The rear splasher too is treated to this quite complex shape with the lining because the rear splasher and the cab side are kind of like one piece. There's no actual seam or join and that is replicated well. The firebox we have all of these washout plugs and the riveting detail over the top just as would be expected. And then looking to the top we've got the line of rivets marching down the centre, a band across the front and those safety valves look to be turned metal I think they're turned metal yeah they do feel like they're turned metal and they're really crisp and sharp with a lot of detail on there with the whistle next to them and again I think that is that actually feels like it's metal I'm not sure could be uh, some kind of hard plastic but it has a feeling of metal and certainly does feel quite durable to the touch cab roof features the appropriate riveting bands and that central hatch and when we look inside this is where some of the magic of these models really comes alive with all of the detail inside the cabs just a little bit difficult to uh, focus in there there we go the glazing actually um, it, it it works really quite well the flush glazing uh, we've got this kind of white top to the cab and then the boiler back head itself is finished in black and that demarcation between the two is actually really, really good at hiding any of the glazing and uh, keeping that flush look. I really do like the gauges at the top there. We've got the representation of the needles and all the markings. And it really is something which looks amazing. So many different colours in here. Separately fitted parts as well. We've got the uh, wheels on the valves and the clacks. We've also got the uh, levels as well with uh, representation of, I think, have they got the um, the sort of cross hatching as well? It's difficult to tell, but certainly really nicely done. And all of that separate pipe work picked out in a kind of coppery colour and the separate regulator. And then the firebox hole appears to have almost a shield at the side, I suspect. That is to protect the driver from radiated heat when it's open because he would have been has stood or uh, sat in that area, this being left-hand drive. Out of the box, there is no full plate. Uh, actually, no, I tell a lie, there is a full plate. It's folded all the way down. And that does appear to be 
it is poseable but it's quite stiff on its hinges so I'm going to actually leave it in the down position looking to the underside of the cab roof I do like this kind of off-white color it really does brighten up the cab and then we've got the metal handrails that uh, just go in kind of a loop over there as well does your home insurance cover your model railway collection? There can be certain conditions or limitations attached to your policy which could leave your collection uninsured or with very limited cover from all kinds of risks. For example, many home policies only provide very limited cover for contents kept in garages or other outbuildings and some will only cover for collections up to a limited value. Magnet Insurance are here to help give you that peace of mind, making sure that you don't get caught out. Our specialist policies are flexible and we can work with you to make sure that your collection is correctly covered and answer any questions that you have. Put your mind at ease by giving us a call on 01636 858 249 or visit our website for a quotation at www.modelrailwayinsurance.co.uk. The front face of the model is captured perfectly. We've got the smoke box door. This isn't an opening one. Backman did go through a phase where they quite liked their opening smoke box doors, but I didn't. And the reason for this was when they were open, you could see the tube plate of the boiler in the wrong position. The tube plate should actually be back here, but on the models, they were up here because of the need to use that space for the internals. And I felt that things like that, it just looked so wrong that it would have been better not having the opening smoke box door, but we don't have that on this model. The rest of the boiler capturing the LMS compound perfectly. Looking to the other side, again, we've got the repeat of the lining and different uh, equipment there on the running plate. We've got the correct joggle as well, part way across the front splashes. We've got the steps all factory finished and applied. These are on quite robust. And then it's these front cylinders. This is where Backman has had to make the compromise to be able to get these to go around train set curves. It's not quite so obvious on the BR black livery, but you can see the cutout. And uh, that, along with the front face with its cutout, are replaceable for some of the parts from that detail pack to give you the full shape of the front cylinders but at the cost of not giving full swing to this front bogey. The front bogey itself is centrally sprung and pivoted, just like the prototype, and it gives it a great field of movement. We've got the correct spoked wheels on there with um, uh, some darkened treads, and looking on the front, we've also got the guard irons and a front coupling which fits into a NEM pocket which is part of that uh, front bogey uh, arrangement. So this can be removed if you don't want the front bogey, but the NEM pocket itself is part of the molding. On the front buffer beam, this is finished in red. It's really nice to see too that we don't have over application of this paint, so it doesn't look like it's swamping the detail. The sprung buffers on the front, they don't actually have a huge amount of travel. But they are there, they are sprung, and I do like these turned metal heads. And uh, these would be improved with a little smudge of gloss paint in the centre to represent the grease that these would inevitably end up with after being utilised. On the front, we've got a 17A shed plate, again, really nice and crisp. And then we've got the BR number 41143 on the uh, number plate. And then the rest of these handrails are all metal and factory applied. Across the front here, we've got a whole load of metal lamp irons and the vacuum standard is fitted as standard. The funnel itself, you can just make out the bottom. It doesn't go all the way through. I don't think it's a big problem. Um, certainly it's something that uh, it's a shame in a way that it doesn't open up and go down into the void of the smoke box. Although I suspect that there is something going on underneath there which prevents that from being the case. All in all, the livery application really is slick and smooth. It could have been quite basic, but Backman have shown that they can do this BR black lined livery incredibly well. And I've got every faith too that the early Crest version will be equally as good out of the box the model really was a smooth performer now Batman does recommend running these in but in all honesty I didn't see any necessity for that with this model 
For this, you're going to need a small jeweler's style crosshead screwdriver. And uh, where we go looking is in the tender. All of the business end of this DCC fit is in the tender. So you don't need to worry yourself with dismantling the locomotive. But the tender and the locomotive are semi-permanently connected by these wires. So you just have to be a little bit careful. To get inside the tender, we actually have three screws. Now there's one at the back, so we just gotta try and get down and in for that, just as you see it to the left of the coupling. Just be quite careful, the brake rigging you can see there is popped out, and actually that does us a favor because it improves access. Don't worry too much because we can just pop that back in. And then you've got these two incredibly tiny screws at the front. Again, be careful not to round the heads off. They shouldn't be in tight. Now these tenders can often be quite a tight fit. The rearmost screw is quite long. You're not gonna get those all confused with each other, but you'll find that the front just needs a bit of a wiggle to get it out and then it'll pop upwards. Just lift it straight upwards. Don't have a temptation to lever it because you will do some damage. Now, I've already gone ahead and fitted this with the 21 pin Trainomatic decoder. We do have a link to them down below. It's a perfect out of the box decoder for being able to just fit and go for lifetime reliability. We get a huge area inside the tender and I actually prefer this. I think this is much better for giving you the space for a sound installation, for stay alives, for decent speakers and certainly any of the decoder options that you choose should have no problems fitting in here. When it comes to going back together, these two lugs are a very tight fit into the holes and you just need to be a little bit cautious when fitting the tender back together. It's as well to just fit it square on, gently push it down. If it won't go, then just check your alignment because it's very easy to damage those lugs. They should go in and you end up with a flush finish on the tops of where these screws go. The magnetic screwdriver is an absolute must for this. Don't over talk them. I often wonder what goes through somebody's mind when they go all Wayne's World on these and talk them down so hard that it is impossible to ever get them off. You don't need to do that. You just turn the screw until you feel ever so slight resistance and then stop. That is more than enough. And again, just gently tighten this screw. It's very easy to round the head on this, so just don't. Stop if you feel that you've not got a good grip and then only keep going when you're satisfied. And then click the brake rigging back into place. Just make sure all the others are in place and then we can take this off to the programming track. When it came time to get the locomotive onto the main tracks on Weir Yard, it performed really well. There was a little bit of bouncing through some of the point work, but it wasn't too pronounced. And the most important thing was that the locomotive didn't stutter at all, helped by the pickup spread out across the tender and the locomotive too. It hauled a reasonable length train without too many issues, although it was possible to tell that it was just on the edge of traction on some of the uphill grades where those large driving wheels just looked like they were speeding up a little bit as they lost a little bit of traction but it did still get round. The performance was very very smooth even down to some low speeds and both forwards and backwards it really was a great runner. The fact that this has large wheels and those rods that are cranked fairly close to the centre means that it has quite a stately progress on the track and it really does look the part just like the full-sized locomotives would have too. After all that was part of the reason to give them a good top speed without actually having rods that flailed around manically and to reduce the reciprocation on the pistons which might have caused damage at high speed otherwise. When I moved it on to the torture test track and other areas of Weir Yard, it did perform quite well. There was a little bit of surging when it's going downhill, but no more so than other models. And this is something that with a few tweaks on the back EMF on the CVs, I have no doubt it's possible to clear up and get rid of. 
It was also pretty good down to actually radius one curves. And this is something that normally models are recommended for no less than radius two. But those cutouts on the cylinder did make sure that this model was perfectly capable of doing some very short stints on radius one on the torture test track. Like Loco 2, it took in the 5% grade without any great issues whatsoever. There was no wheel slip, and you might think this is a bit of an oxymoron with it not holding a load in this area. But there are some locomotives that do struggle even on their own to get grip on the 5% grade. So it, it did perform really, really well. Overall, the performance was pretty reasonable with just a few small niggles, which really it's not going to break the bank. And certainly at this price, this is a great model and you will not be disappointed at all. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality. And by and large, this is a really well put together model. It's nice and solid and it's quite a reliable performer as well. There's not really an awful lot of note to this. I do like the fact that we get the brake rigging all factory fitted, but it's that drawbar. Sorry, Backman, do please do something about that. It's too easy to end up with your train just being pulled by the wires and not the drawbar itself. Everything else did seem pretty good. And all in all, I'm going to give this a 9.8. On running quality, the model performed incredibly well on the tracks of Weir Yard, taking in the main line with no real issues whatsoever. The 440 wheel arrangement, though, does leave it a little bit down on grip. Thankfully, there's no traction tyres, which is a way that some 440 models in the past have coped with this, but certainly it is an area where you do need to keep your track spotless, and I'm going to give it a 9.7. On DCC fitting and innovation, certainly this model is reasonably easy to DCC fit. With all that space in the tender, any sound decoder, speaker and stay alive combination is going to find plenty of room. But that is at the compromise of there being no empty coal chute to model. So you are left with this lump of coal, whether you like it or not. There's also no logical place for the speaker and it seems that you do need to just be a little bit careful when fitting either the speaker enclosure from Backman or if you're fitting your own speaker then there just isn't anything natively to put it into or onto and certainly that is something to bear in mind. We've got this joggle to the connecting rods. It is a necessity. It's great how Backman have thought this through, but it is just a little bit obvious with those clear bends. And I can't help but be left feeling that having it all at an angle rather than bent would have been just a little bit better. All in all, I think the biggest drawback is going to be the combination of the wiper pickups not quite making contact properly with the backs of the wheels. I did have to adjust this. And the tender drawbar, it just keeps rearing its ugly head. And I'm going to give this an 8.0. On accuracy and quality of finish, this is where the model really does shine. It's a great model and subtly different from the Midland compound in a way that makes this definitely a great addition, even to any collection that already has the Midland compound. And I'm going to give this a 9.4. On value for money, at the price point that TMC have got this and the early Crest version at, there really is no contest. A 10 out of 10. It's a great deal, a great price for a great locomotive. They won't hang around long, so get them now. They're never likely to appear at this great a price, even second hand. They tend to go for more than that, so fill your boots whilst they're available. And that gives us a grand score of 46.9. It's a great model, well worthy to add to any collection. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative. And like I said at the beginning, there is a link in the description box to take you to TMC, the model center, where you can find your own bargain and really at the price they're at there, these are brand new, these aren't second hand. They're actually cheaper than I'm seeing these Midland compounds coming up second hand. So grab yourself an amazing bargain and do keep on the lookout because as I said before, this deal actually came up 
after I filmed last Friday's bargain crawl video. So it just goes to show they do keep coming. And please, please, please hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to the channel. Then you won't miss out on the new videos as they come up. And you won't be asking, oh, why don't you do a video on X, Y and Z? Only to find that actually I already did and you missed it because you weren't subscribed. But until next time, do please leave a comment down below. It's always great to hear from you. And uh, do share any of your bargain spots as well. It's a great way to help out your fellow modelers. Until next time, you take great care. Happy modeling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. Does your home insurance cover your model railway collection? There can be certain conditions or limitations attached to your policy which could leave your collection uninsured or with very limited cover from all kinds of risks. For example, many home policies only provide very limited cover for contents kept in garages or other outbuildings and some will only cover for collections up to a limited value. Magnet Insurance are here to help give you that peace of mind, making sure that you don't get caught out. Our specialist policies are flexible and we can work with you to make sure that your collection is correctly covered and answer any questions that you have. Put your mind at ease by giving us a call on 01636 858 249 or visit our website for a quotation at www.modelrailwayinsurance.co.uk I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.